Hi guys, I'm Eleanor. Welcome to my first video. On this channel, I'm going to be talking about things that I find interesting. Hopefully, you will too. Please feel free to leave your comments below. It'd be really interesting to hear what you have to say. And if you've got any requests for things you'd like to talk about, that would be great too. As you can see, this video, I'm going to be talking about whether or not history should focus on the movers and the shakers. Enjoy. Although history as a field of study is pretty expansive, when we think of history, there are certain images that spring to mind. Think hours of year four history projects. The Roman Empire. Vikings with horned helmets. Henry VIII and his six wives. The Nazis. It is fair to say that all these people and groups have made, for whatever reason, their mark on the pages of history, supposedly making them movers and shakers. But how can we understand what constitutes a mover without previously considering the circumstances that preceded, surrounded and followed the mover? We can't know from what and to what the mover moved, or why, how or what they shook, without understanding the jigsaw pieces surrounding them. Another problem is that by relying on contemporary sources, our view is already limited by the views of the last few thousand years. However, trying to understand the lives of all 107 billion human beings ever to have lived would be mind blowing. So perhaps narrowing our research in, into the last six to seven million years of human existence is not such a bad idea. Martin Luther King was the figurehead of the civil rights movement that brought about the first steps towards equality for people of colour in the United States. He provided direction and focus to the movement, but it would be wrong to attribute all success of the civil rights movement to this one man. The horrific murder of 14-year-old Emmett Till in 1955, John F. Kennedy's assassination in 1963, and Lyndon B. Johnson's influence as a southerner were also undoubtedly key. As a result, if we study only King, we will never come even close to understanding why the civil rights movements made such progress. For example, LBJ's Voting Rights Act increased black voting turnouts from 6% to 59% from 1964 to 69 in Mississippi. Focusing merely on the movers and shakers, therefore, seems fairly limiting in the understanding of history that it provides for us. Another problem with focusing on the movers and shakers is not just deciding whom we consider to be important, but whom for the last few thousand years has been considered important. For much of that time, societies have been dominated by men, meaning there are very few women who manage to overcome the prejudice against them and to be recognised for it. For example, Richard the Lionheart was a crusading hero of the 12th century, but could not have done this without his mother, Eleanor of Aquitaine, keeping a firm watch over his lands whilst he was on crusade. Where Richard was the obvious shaker, Eleanor's role was to maintain consistency and stability within his kingdom. Her shaking ability came not in the blazon effects of what she achieved, but in the form of her unconventionality as a woman in power. No one can become a shaker without having the groundwork laid beneath them, and it was so with Richard. What gives us the right to dismiss those who sat just beneath and helped movers and shakers on their way to eternal fame, simply because they weren't born a male into a certain family? Having said this, over the last six to seven million years, 107 billion humans have existed. Therefore, to try to study, reconstruct and understand the vast expanse of human history in its entirety would be nigh on impossible. Moreover, the obsession with the tiny details would eventually obscure from us the bigger picture. We might know that lots of peasants with pitchforks went to York in October 1536 and that they then went on to Pontefract Castle and then went home just after Christmas, but we would not understand why. There would be no reason not to think that the Lord of Pontefract was handing out extra large sausage rolls for Christmas that were too big for your average 16th century fork. However, closer scrutiny reveals that this was, sadly, not the case. Instead, we find the peasants had risen up as part of the rebellion dubbed the Pilgrimage of Grace, 
that they took York, the capital of the north of England, before seizing Pontefract Castle, seen as the gateway to the south. That Henry was later forced to negotiate demonstrates not just the size of the rebellion, but the undeniable importance of Pontefract as a position, giving us a huge insight into the Tudor power balance. History is not merely the study of reconstructing and knowing the past, it is the study of understanding and interpreting it, which requires us to take a step back and consider the whys and the hows linking the many details. Focusing on the movers and shakers, therefore, can provide us with a convenient focal point through which and from which to direct our research. It is therefore clear that the movers and shakers rightly have their place in historical study. However, in the same way that we can become fixated on the micro, so too can we become overly preoccupied with the macro. Concentrating entirely on the movers and shakers of history, which presents us with the bigger picture, can become lazy. To bridge this gap between the movers and the shakers and the nuts and bolts of history, we must compromise somewhere between oversimplicity and mind-blowing complexity. We need to focus on the movers and shakers, else we would not know where to start. However, we cannot neglect the importance of the many that followed, supported and rebelled against those movers. After all, there is no leader without people to lead. I hope you found that interesting. If you did, please like, comment, subscribe below. I've also included one of the books that I used to make this video, which was She Walls by Helen Castor, which covers the Empress Matilda, Eleanor of Aquitaine, who I mentioned, Isabella of France and Margaret of Anjou as the female rulers who came before the Tudor queens, Mary I and Elizabeth I. I hope you enjoyed that. Have a great week and I'll see you next time.